Good morning, folks. Deadly earthquake, major winter event, top science news and more, and we're starting with the owner of these plasma filaments. The last 24 hours on our star at spaceweathernews.com shows the southern coronal hole turning through center disk. Its solar wind should be arriving at Earth within about a day. There are a few bright points popping up across the disk, but they are lacking the sunspots beneath them. Sun still revving up for the next sunspot cycle, which should begin in the next 12 months. By far the biggest event of the last day was in Albania. 6.4 earthquake, striking shallow, a very bad recipe as their strongest quake in decades took down buildings and turned deadly. It's of no consolation that the largest red alert on our forecast map last night was over top the region. Best wishes to everyone affected. Cleanup is going to continue much of the week. This is the scene in Colorado Springs. We're in single-digit temps, and there's about a foot of snow on the ground after dinner time last night saw green grass everywhere. Gave a little footprint so you can easily see the overnight accumulation. Up next, Mount Etna. And for those in other parts of the world for whom the advice not to live on its lava flank seems like simple, obvious, easy advice, it is not so easy when they've basically built a major city on the hillside, with satellite communities spread across the mountain. Excellent article from GSA here on the risks to those nearby. Up next, James Webb Telescope is still in the bullpen, but excitement is mounting. While deep space is its main goal, it will also examine close-by objects like the Sculptor Dwarf Galaxy. There is as much, if not more, to learn from Webb as it gets crisp detail of nearby objects as there will be with its revelations about the large-scale background and distant objects. Up next, a little fun dive into scientists' imaginations. They are looking at active galactic nuclei, the plasma cores of galaxies that the mainstream calls black holes. Apart from the name choice, this really isn't a terrible idea, and in fact it makes sense. Why would we not have planets tearing around these active nuclei by the thousands, if not tens of thousands, especially given the material we know exists around those nuclei, and how many rogue planets have been ejected into the interstellar space of the galaxy? If you're unfamiliar, they say there could be more rogue planets than stars in the Milky Way. Taking a little swing here, top scientist, top journal on a top topic so topping they made it free to read as a PDF. They claim that the new CMIP6 data allows them to make better climate models. First, it is the new solar irradiance and ozone values used in the study that allow the better modeling, but more importantly, it's still just the solar irradiance. We are more than two years since the solar particle data has been released. Mainstream climate scientists either refuse to use it or refuse to publish their results. Very telling. And speaking of solar forcing, the last considerable solar activity we had was September 2017. The largest flare sequence in 12 years cropped up and began pounding X-ray flare explosions and charged particle CME clouds into space. A new paper is highly detailing the event, from the eruptions to the impact and through the storm phases. The key aspect here are the particle interactions, what happens when CMEs combine on their way to Earth. They noticed that there was a combination, peak and recovery phase, letting us know and reminding those who have been here a while that it's the double impact scenario that could be the worst one. By the way, I know some of you have gotten very good at finding small detail outflows on Soho, Lasco, trying to find stealth CMEs or denser solar wind streams. It's just not necessary. When the sun lights up, there is no squinting needed. It's obvious. Again, this we're looking at here is sunspot maximum. We are currently in the minimum, and it's going to be ending and returning to that maximum very soon. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.